Hi, I'm Arti. Welcome to another sketchbook tour. This is the classy gecko sketchbook made in the UK that I reviewed a few videos ago. It's taken me about eight months to finish this. I think it's the fastest sketchbook I've ever filled. The paper is quite hardy and it takes a variety of art supplies very well. I will list these all in the description below in case you want to try them. To keep things from smudging, I use two forms of artist fixative and so far it's held up well. The main reason for finishing this sketchbook so quickly is that I used it for my Zoom sessions. You might already have seen my odd orange sketchbook, which was volume one of Drawing with Others. This one, I would say, is sketchbook number two. I keep it exclusively for Drawing with Others and it really brings out some more skills in me that I didn't realize I had. New sketchbooks always merit a test page. And if you want to see this in detail, I do have a whole video where I start this new sketchbook and do a few sketches in it. As I mentioned, the paper does stand up to a variety of media. The first session in this book was an odd orange one on interiors. Of course, I haven't drawn interiors very often over the course of my career, so I was pleasantly surprised that I did enjoy it, and I think I might draw a few more now. I used mostly neo color, some markers, and then pencil on top of that. I think it came out quite well, and I liked the textures. This spread was in the same session, but we spent a lot more time on this image on the right hand side. We were given 40 minutes to do this, so that's quite a long time to add quite a lot of detail. I do feel like I lost a little bit of depth in this. Perhaps I could have kept it a bit simpler. And next time I draw something like this, I definitely will. In contrast to the previous session from Odd Orange, this one on household objects, also from Odd Orange, was quite a bit faster. We started with 30 seconds and then moved up to five minutes, heading back to two minutes, and then back up again to six minutes for this telephone and scissors. I don't regularly draw from life, so this was a really, really good practice session. In these sessions, we're encouraged to draw things our own way, so you can see that I'm really not very true to the reference image except for actual physicality, and I just made it neon pink instead. The following month, I attended one of Holly Surplus's sessions for the first time. It was interesting because we were drawing from live footage at the San Diego Zoo and the subject was hippos. So firstly, it was challenging to actually draw from a live feed where things are moving around and you have to be really quick about what you're doing. And also, I'd never drawn a hippo in my life before. So that was a big challenge. Somehow, I picked the exact colors that hippos have on their bodies, which is gray and pink. And it really worked out for me. I enjoyed it. By this point, I was probably about 20 minutes into the session and my hand had started to flow, I had started to understand the shapes of the hippo, and I really feel like, particularly on the next page after this, that I got the feel of the mother and baby hippo. I haven't been back to a holly surplus session yet, but I hope to go back to one again soon. Now we're back to an odd orange session where we're drawing people in fashion. However, April of Monkey Mintaka and I decided to draw cats and dogs respectively, and ever since then, I have not been able to stop drawing people as dogs. I am now incapable of drawing a human being without a dog's head on it. So you can look forward to some of those drawings from me <laughs> based on these ones that I did. And there's some more further ahead in this sketchbook as well. I just basically started with blocky forms and then put a dog's head on top with the breed specific to what I thought that should be on that, on that body and then added details in with pencil. And it was in fact, one of the most enjoyable sessions that I have ever done with Odd Orange. They do say that illustrators should have some people work in their portfolio. But for me, I think it's just going to be dogs as people work. Aren't they so cute? I could not resist. I mean, look at them. How can you, how can you not, right? And the bulldog lady, it, I always think of her as an opera singer or something in that amazing costume. You can see from the timings written on these that they were just under 10 minutes and that's a good enough time to add quite a lot of detail to something. Some of the proportions I feel like could be better and that's something I need to work on in the future. But I think the character that I managed to put into these illustrations is what caught my imagination and what has kept me drawing them in this way since then. Particularly these two punk guys that I think could be found on any corner sometime in the 80s. And this guy who somehow just looks like maybe somebody you would find in Berlin on the music scene. Anyway, in total contrast to this session, the next one was with Sarah Van Dongen and her Patreon, where we were drawing flowers. I really enjoyed this session because I was unwell. I was actually drawing in bed 
And the fact that this sketchbook has a nice hard back and that its landscape format meant it sat really nicely on my lap while I was drawing it. I do enjoy drawing flowers a lot and this session kind of restarted that for me. I'd stopped drawing them, well I used to paint them on silk a lot for my scarves and things, but I'd stopped drawing them for a while after I closed my silk business and now I'm back to it and I'm really really loving it. I had to pause all my Patreon memberships early this year and I'm really looking forward to getting back to some of them, perhaps in the new year. Particularly Sarah Van Dongen and Sarah Dyer. Next, it was a special session with Odd Orange and Magali Franov to celebrate their collaborative sketchbook release. I didn't get one of those sketchbooks. Well, the colors weren't quite for me, but the session itself was great fun because we worked with continuous line, used the non-dominant hand, did blind contour, did quite a lot of experimental drawing and it really makes you think about how you draw, the lines that you make, the control that you have with your dominant hand versus your non-dominant hand. Looking at this page now looks a little bit of a mess but you can see where the thought process went in and how deliberate some of the lines are because I was working with my hand that I don't normally use. I was also working with the color palette that Magali and Morgan had suggested. They're not colors that I naturally gravitate towards so I did find it a little difficult. But then that's the whole point of these sessions is to put yourself outside of your comfort zone. See what you can achieve when you're not doing exactly what you do day in and day out. Here I did vary the color palette slightly but again it was a subject that I'm not used to drawing. This is also another session in which I really appreciated the landscape format of the sketchbook which allows me to do sort of a progression of drawings across the two pages or the spread and I think that I will probably get more landscape sketchbooks in order to do this more. This was even more obvious when we moved on to the next session which was an odd orange bears session where I mean I don't really draw bears <laughs> if you followed my work. So from the first drawing which was really awkward and just a blocky shape perhaps with a face as I progressed through I somehow got into the flow and by the time I got to this particular drawing, I feel like I had a pretty good sense of what a bear should look like. This is once again where I must reiterate that practice drawing something over and over and over again does give you better skills. It gives you an understanding of what you're trying to draw and there is absolutely no substitute for it. Even within a short session, drawing two, three, four minute poses, when I got to the next page of bears, as you'll see, there's a marked improvement from the first bear drawing within that same session to the last one here in blue and this one in orange. This orange one in particular, I feel, got the feel of the real bear that we were drawing and I was even comfortable by this point <laughs> enough to be drawing while recording an Instagram reel. This is one of the major reasons why I keep going back to these group drawing sessions simply to practice, to improve my skills, to become more confident that I can draw something that I've never drawn before and enjoy it at the same time. As an impartial viewer, you could perhaps tell the difference between the drawings I was doing in the previous Odd Orange sketchbook tour versus the drawings that I'm doing now. There's a marked improvement, at least to my eye, in the confidence with which I'm drawing things. This Odd Orange session was negative space and I've actually done an entire video based on these drawings here. I used a limited palette and you can see that on my channel. I will link it for you in the description box below. The combination of both negative space and a limited palette was a challenging one, but sometimes simplifying is the best way to figure out how to draw something and also to get quite a lot of detail without too much color or without too much shape. Alongside the dogs as people pages, these are some of my favorites. Well, apart from this deer drawing, which didn't quite turn out as expected. This session was entirely enlightening and it has definitely influenced the colors that I'm going on to use. In fact, I'd have to say this entire sketchbook has been transformative because it has taken my illustration practice in a slightly different direction. I used to mostly draw a lot of food and many years ago florals, but now I'm drawing food as well as florals and some amount of animals, mostly dogs and cats, and now the people as dogs as well. 
drawing inanimate things like these chairs also helps in that practice because when I'm drawing dogs as people, at some point they're going to have to sit on chairs, right? So I need that practice too. These were harder to draw than they perhaps look because getting the perspective right is really hard in the four minutes that we were given, like four minutes for all three chairs, right? And then these sofas were a little bit easier because they're more chunky, more blocky, less moving parts, I suppose. Well, non moving parts, but bits and pieces, you know what I mean. The end of the session had a slightly more interior feel with chairs as the main subject. And I really liked this one, but I'm not particularly a fan of the next two. The one on the right I actually did not finish and I have a blank space on the right for some unknown reason. This next session was one with Sarah Dyer. She was drawing scenes from Andalusia where she was having a retreat. It's kind of the first time I've drawn landscapes in a long time and I did struggle. But at the same time, I realized I need to simplify this color palette next time and not use so many colors and maybe block it out a little bit more. But the final drawing that we did, which is this one, was much better. I used a limited palette. I was able to get in a lot more detail in the time that we were allowed and it has a far more organic feel. Yet another subject where practice makes perfect, well, better if not perfect. And here we are back again to the people as dogs. This session was again in my limited palette video. I kept it simple, just using Tombow pens in a few different colors and then pencils on top for the details. Again, I'm just substituting the heads with dogs, mostly in this case, my Labradoodle's head because he was around and I was just looking at him while I was drawing. And I kept the bodies more or less as the references were. This guy was a baseballer. Is that what they're called? A baseball player. I feel like the Victorians did anthropomorphism very well because many years ago, I designed a book on the work of Louis Wayne who drew cats and he did this and many other artists did as well but he's the one that I remember the most. This was an odd orange session on people in motion and I miscalculated on some of them the length of the body and that's one of the disadvantages of this very long landscape format is that you need to draw quite small in order to fit them in and you can see here on this page as well opposite this lovely poodle on a bicycle I just felt like the poodle suited the subject. Um, these people who are dancing, their feet just went off the page and I didn't want to just leave them like that, so I added a little bit of paper. It also adds a little character to the sketchbook itself to have little pop-outs and things like that. That's something I might take forward in the future as well, but also if I ever want to scan these and turn them into prints, all I have to do is scan them and then do a little photoshopping in order to make up for the little gap between where the paper is and the sketches. On this one, I added some little flies around her fish baskets, but they didn't quite turn out as expected. They just looked like blots of ink. But I was rather pleased with how these two statue pieces turned out. They were marble statues that I just drew as dogs. <laughs> and then, of course, this last guy with the accordion. I always thought that I'd come back to this last image and redo it with more colors and things. It was only four minutes, but I feel like I could have done more if I was talking less on the Zoom call. But anyway, the following session, I did something slightly different. I had seen people like on Marwin prepare their backgrounds before they painted on them. So that's what I did for the session. I used some watercolor pencils and a water brush and created some backgrounds and then dried them, obviously, before I started to draw on top of them. I definitely felt like when I was drawing on top of these, I was looking for the spaces where I could fill in details in order to have more detail of the color within what I was drawing. So I was creating shapes around the shapes that the previously painted background had already created. It was really challenging. It's like a little puzzle trying to figure out where to draw and what to leave uncovered. Particularly where this cow is concerned, the blue just sort of created more depth within her and also in these geese. The forward geese have more white on them and the geese in the background have more color. I feel like I will be doing this quite a lot more in my drawings and I particularly loved drawing this horse on the background. It was quite a challenge trying to figure out firstly how to draw a horse after not having drawn one since that 50 drawings in a day class that I did sometime year, last year or the year before that. There's a video on that if you'd like to watch it. But he turned out pretty well and the sense of movement that I got was really aided by the background. 
I'm not really happy with how the owl turned out, so let's not talk about that. But I do like the color palette, which I did for the goats and the tree in the background. I prepped a fair few backgrounds and it really worked out for this under the sea one. Somehow the appropriate colors ended up on the appropriate pages for this odd orange session. And I tried to use more texture in order to enhance the background as well as add more detail to things that I was drawing on top of it. Once again, I limited the number of colors I was using, letting the background and the line work speak for itself. I do love drawing under the sea stuff just because I'm fascinated by fish and coral and wavy seaweedy things. They're just very calming and organic and very kind of mindful to draw. This has to be one of my top five pages in this sketchbook. I just really love the way that the background interplayed with what I was drawing on top. This shark, I don't think I've drawn this particular shark ever before, or kelp. And it just, it's just a perfect centerpiece to this page. I added all the bubbles around, this coral and this Finding Nemo style fish thing. Oh, I just love it. I just absolutely love it. However, it often happens to me that I don't love the page just after the page that is one of my top five favorites. I do love how I drew the fish and the turtle is better than the ones that I've drawn before. But this octopus, I, th I don't know what's going on with it. Anyway, after that, I dropped in for a short part of Becca Hall's session where she was drawing animals in one minute. Like each of these was about a minute to draw and they were drawing like a hundred animals or something, but I only had time for one spread. Then in this session with Beth Spencer, I actually drew humans as humans for once because we were drawing people's grandmothers and I've not really drawn old people that much. So it was a nice challenge. And of course I submitted one of my own gran, which you'll see on the next spread. But I really liked that I used limited palettes and I tried to get the feel of the pictures that they'd shared. On this spread particularly, I feel like the two close-up portraits came out pretty well and a pretty good likeness to the original pictures that I was drawing from. As you know, I don't really draw people that much and in particular, I don't draw portraits. I've drawn very few portraits in my life, mostly of dogs. But on this spread, I really enjoyed drawing this lady. I had not drawn somebody with pursed lips trying to blow out candles. So that was a challenge. And then this lovely little couple was a woman and her sister and that one is my grandmother who is 101 years old still physically in good health but her mind is obviously going at 101 but it's still really nice to see her wave to me on video calls the last grandmother was a very outdoorsy one with her stick and in a woodland area again i kind of ran out of time for this one but the next session with odd orange i ended up using uh, my metallic gold and silver palette and it was a good challenge. I have not done this before, but I think I might do so again, just for the pure joy of trying to figure out how to work metallics into shades and tone. The subject matter for these references was mostly nature and human based because they were taken from old National Geographic magazines, which was really nice to see, very vintage. On this one, I used a nice copper tone to get the feel of, I think it's Colorado somewhere to see the canyons. And then on this one, to get the clouds, I added some silver, just for the ethereal feel of it. And then of course here I'm back to drawing people as dogs. I just can't resist it. And then for the final piece in this session, it was a beach scene, which I'm really not happy with it. I think I could have treated it far better, had more depth, a little bit more perspective. I've just, I'm not happy with this one at all. The final odd orange session in this book was autumn foliage with fungi and florals and leaves that Morgan had picked out as references. Really enjoyed this one because as you know, I like drawing florals now. Haven't really drawn acorns. I can't remember if I've actually drawn them or not for a long time. Just used a limited palette and got the sketchy feel of them. Added some oak leaves just flying around. I just used two colors for this in Tombow pens to get layers of color. And then there was an autumn bouquet, which I absolutely love how this turned out. I think I definitely want to use this color palette for more autumny things. Then we did a whole spread of flower heads, seed heads combined. This is something that again, I would like to take further, do more drawings of this kind of thing. Here in England, it's autumn right now and the leaves are falling everywhere. There's plenty of inspiration for seed heads. Plus on every single dog walk that we go on, there are dried leaves like these in all sorts of shapes and forms from all sorts of trees. So plenty of inspiration to go around. I thought this theme was a fitting subject for the end paper 
of the sketchbook. We finished in autumn and the back end paper has an autumn themed pattern. I might actually make a proper fabric pattern out of this that then I can put in my spoon flower shop or something. But for the moment, I've added seed heads, flowers, dots, and leaves to make that. Before I give you a sneak peek into my next sketchbook, I must tell you that I bought three more Art Gecko sketchbooks because I love this one so much. But first, I'm using the render sketchbook in which I have done an odd orange session for Halloween. So we did a creepy cat, some fish girls, <laughs> and a few other very spooky looking things from films that I will never watch because I'm scared of stuff like that. If you like the sketchbook tour, there are plenty more on my channel, as well as other videos to watch. So leave a comment down below, tell me what your favorite page was from my Art Gecko sketchbook. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!